Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's sessions. Thank you all, Stock Age Club member, for joining me today. And uh, today we have amazing personality with us, Mr. Jain. So, Mr. Jain, welcome to the special session which we are organizing for our club member here. Thank you, Swati ji. Thank you so much for having me on your uh, channel. And Alok ji, of course, you don't need an introduction. I hope everyone is familiar. You're also with us on the stockage application. Um, I would also like to request everyone who have joined in here to please kindly keep your internet intact to get the amazing audio quality and the presentation. But yes, at any point of time, if I find that you know there is an issue with the audio and the video, if there is any kind of lag, I will come in between and convey to Mr. Jain so that it gets uh, checked from our side, right? Sure. Also, please remember that if you have any question, you can put your question panel because the last uh, 20 minutes we will be doing a QA session so that we can guide you if you have any question and of course the recording will be available according uh, uh, and we will inform that on our stockage social platform for sure with the youtube unlisted link we will share with you all um as you all know that i'm the vice president for our customer delight team so please club member you are just not a member you are a family uh, to us so if you have any suggestion or feedback you can always write us to the customer delight team by tagging it to on the social platform and we will definitely try to help you and uh, towards the end once the session gets over you will also find a feedback form appearing which again i will come and tell you about that so please ensure that you help us with your feedback too so alokji not taking much time over to you uh, thank you swati ji and uh... Good evening to all the attendees. Uh, I'm sure you have logged in from various parts of the country and even abroad. Uh, it's a great, great pleasure to have uh, the opportunity to address you and to introduce uh, Momentum Investing, something that we have been doing for a long while now. And, uh, and this concept of Momentum Investing has gradually picked up steam uh, about six, seven years back. Nobody used to talk about it. Uh, because there were not many practitioners of momentum investing in India. Um, this is an age-old, uh, you know, way of investing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a art form in a way where you're trying to use data and to actually use the price movements to decide uh, what to buy and when to buy and how to sell. So it's a very, uh, you know, data-oriented, practical. Uh, you know way of investing uh, i'll also you know touch upon a lot of myths around momentum investing uh, the the idea of this evening is to have a very basic introduction to the concept of momentum investing i'll go through some problem areas of our usual investing which uh, even i have faced in my career i've been in the markets now for more than 27 28 years and the first half of, I, of my career so far, I was trying to do conventional investing. I failed at that. And over my experience, I, I learned how, uh, you know, more structured way of investing has helped me. And that's what we practice uh, at Weekend Investing uh, using Momentum Investing. So without further ado, let, let me jump into the presentation uh, that I have. Uh, I will keep a Q&A session of about 20 minutes. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to do this in about 40 minutes to start with. So some basically some uh, background in terms of the common problems that we face, uh, you know, when we are approaching investing. So one of the biggest one, I think, which is, you know, which we normally don't even think about uh, when we are investing is that we are in a very fast paced changing world. So, you know, it's like a world of disruption where, uh, you know, there is not even enough time for a corporate to, you know, really have a runway of several decades. By the time somebody comes to pace with whatever they have developed, whatever they are manufacturing, there is some disruption that comes around and, you know, it tries to disrupt that space. So quality or moat, uh, as traditionally it was called, is no longer sort of a guarantee of success. You know, you'll see very popular names, uh, you know, in this, some of these examples uh, we are showing, 
you know, for instance, Tata Motors dropping 88% over this three-year period, uh, or very recently, you know, I presented some data that you know, out of the current uh, market cap of thousand crores and above, uh, we have only about a thousand stocks which satisfy that criteria, you know, of some uh, size and above, and more than half of that. Uh, are you know between 25 to 50 or even more percent down from their all-time highs whereas the market is already uh, within few percentage of that so things are extremely turbulent in the market and over a longer uh, time period uh, it will become you know even more difficult like this very recently uh, you saw this chart where the holding period of stocks in years actually has shrunk from seven eight years to nearly less than one now so this is the average holding period of stocks held by investors it this is the kind of trend that is uh, there in the world people want to you know not have buy and sleep kind of a situation uh, or at least that is going out of fashion so you know the digitization of the investment industry high frequency trading and you know people want to do things quickly uh, that seems to be behind this this very fast pacing fast changing approach and this is actual data so so there is a study which was done by McKinsey where they found that you know the average tenure of a S&P 500 company that itself has reduced from you know 30 35 years in the early 70s to nearly 15 16 years now so if the average age of the company that will stay in the S&P 500 is also reducing and on top of that you have you know a disruptive environment everywhere so median age of S&P top 10 uh, in 2000 used to be 85 years. In 2018, it dropped to 33 years. That is a kind of drop. The average S&P 500 tenure by 2027 is going to be just 12 years. The average age of a unicorn startup just six years. So it, it is going to become a challenge how to remain, uh, you know, invested in stocks that will remain relevant uh, instead of just, you know, buying and just hoping that, you know, that you know 20 years later that stock will do well so a lot of shifts are happening and what we are seeing is that those shifts are getting faster and faster so uh, if i go from year to year uh, you know you will see a lot of sectoral shifts happen for instance you know if i'm looking at 2014 you know banks did well autos did well psu banks did well uh, and and if i go to the next year you are seeing that you know suddenly media consumption and pharma did well and metals took a huge hit banks psu banks took a huge hit the next year to that you know metals did a huge run up the next year to that uh, you find the real estate doing so well so there is so much of uh, unpredictability of how sectoral moves will happen from year to year you can see this in this chart that each year there is a different set of sectors that is that will move and it is really nothing is predictable in this from going from year to year basis that any sector will lead into any kind of a, a you know prediction what happens the next year you could have a continuity of trend you could have a complete disruption of trend uh, you could have a uh, you know a a, a a trend that comes out of nowhere like psu banks last two years came out of nowhere i mean nobody was expecting psu banks to be 137 percent up last year so the idea then would be you know how do you catch these changing trends as well as stay in relevant uh, sectors and stay out of stocks and sectors which become irrelevant or you know maybe technologies that may become irrelevant so so like today there's a lot of talk about ai so you know there will come a time when there will be a huge shift from from the current technology services that are there and the ones that will be you know at a higher end of the ai curve and that will create a lot of shift between some companies which will be able to deliver that and some companies will not be able to deliver that and that shift will not be evident in the beginning gradually and then over some period of time you will realize that these two or three four companies are continuously going up these are going from you know mid cap it into large cap it whereas these few large cap it names are continuously going down they are not able to keep pace with that these kind of shifts 
uh, are going to happen more and more so uh, and and that is a trend that have been that we are seeing across sectors across years so you know you will find it sector did very well in 2013 14 then two bad years then two decent years then two really good years and and then a down year or maybe some something like a psu banking as you said you know one good year in 14 then you know six down years or one with, with one decent year and then two boom up years uh, so on and so forth so I, I guess you get the idea that you know it's very very difficult to put your uh, finger on the pulse how any sector is going to do not just in the in the near future but in the long term trends how they're going to pan out so that is one huge problem to deal with when you come to the investing world second of course is that you know the the fact that we say that we let's invest in a quality stock now that quality or the moat uh, is not guaranteeing you uh, any success so you know like we saw in the in the example earlier at tata motors or maybe even ashok leyland in this example you know over two three years you're losing 70 80 percent uh maruti suzuki we have seen has not gone anywhere for so many years of course there will be cases where you know stocks will make up you know reliance didn't go anywhere for 10 years then it made up in the next few years overall it did reasonably all right and so on and so forth but i mean there are so many examples where you know a a, a range bound uh, situation may happen uh, for almost a decade or so so the quality may or may not you know ensure that you are able to keep pace with the markets and while there are some people who will be able to sustain 10 20 years of a stock not doing uh, you know what what it's supposed to do but most of us uh, i think will not be able to keep that kind of patience or you know that gumption that yes i want to stick with this stock for 15 years even though it doesn't perform for next 10 years one major uh, issue that i uh, have uh, encountered with many investors in the market is is somewhat of a not i would not say less, uh, lack of knowledge so much but the importance of, uh, of 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 a shallower drawdown how a shallow drawdown really helps you in your investment journey i mean this is a very key metric that uh, one should look at now uh, this chart is showing you the drawdowns of nifty since the last 20 23 years uh, what is a drawdown? A drawdown is nothing but the percentage drop from its highest point at any point of time. So, for instance, in 2000, 2002, you Nifty dropped about 50%, and then there were you know two drops of 30% each in 2004 and 2006. Then there was a drop of about 65 odd percent in 2008, the GFC. Then there was another drop at 30% in 2011, 12. Another drop at 20. 2% in in 2015 16 another drop at 35 or 38% in 2020 covid crash uh, another one recently at around 17% so you have several sort of drawdowns every other year every few years uh, in the benchmark index itself and more likely than not most portfolios have a much deeper drawdown than the index because they may be concentrated in some smaller cap stocks or they may be concentrated in in, in in nature itself so the idea of a shallower drawdown is very clear when we look at this example so let's say there are two strategies uh, strategy a and strategy b and uh, let's say uh, both start at 100 rupees and in the first year let's say strategy a had a gain of 100 percent so 100 rupees went to 200 and in strategy b also the strategy gained 100 percent so uh, so the portfolio went from 100 to 200 both are at the same point after year one both did exactly the same now in year two strategy a had a drawdown of 25 percent so your 200 rupee portfolio became 150 uh, here the drawdown was 12.5 percent instead of 25 percent and the portfolio came down to 175 the second year was different for both of them the first year, strategy a had 25 percent drawdown strategy b had 12.5 percent drawdown and the year three was same for both again so year three uh, the strategy gained 50 percent portfolio went from 150 to 225 here also the strategy gained 50 percent portfolio went from 175 to 262.5 so you can see that the net result at the end of the day 
strategy b was at 162.5 rupees uh sorry 262.5 rupees with a net gain of 162.5 percent uh here strategy a was at 225 rupees with a net gain of 125 percent so just by the virtue of managing the drawdown of year two everything else remaining the same this strategy has been able to eke out a very large gain compared to strategy a so to 162 percent versus 125 percent just by virtue of reducing this drawdown from 25 to 12.5 right so if you were able to save 12.5 percent of drawdown by hook or by crook you are ending up with a net gain of 42 whatever uh, you know 37.5 percent gain there so this is the power of a shallower drawdown and to give you a life analogy of this let's say there were two runners who were running on the road a and b and both fall into a ditch a falls into a ditch which is 25 meters deep uh, is not able to get out easily b falls into a ditch which is just 2.5 meters deep he is able to get out and start running again and you know the, the essentially the gap is is the same as what we are seeing in these in these examples that if you have deep drawdowns it will be difficult to get out of it and it will be difficult to even achieve what you had you know achieved before you went into this drawdown forget about you know gaining on top of this and and in strategy b you are having a shallower drawdown you get up yes you get damaged a bit but then you you know run the full race uh, beyond uh, coming out of it so this is the kind of lesson and 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 the, you know the importance of this metric uh, that is is severely missing in in most people's arsenal when they look at investing and of course you know wrong entry and exit timing uh, you would have seen a lot of people say don't try to time the market uh, because kharidte uh, you know market down ho jati hai you know, stocks drop aur bechte hi market badh jati hai so there are four actually examples that come to my mind so if you buy a stock market will go down if you sell stock market will go up if you buy stock and market goes up you would say why didn't i buy more uh, if you sell stock and market goes down you will say why didn't i sell all of them or why didn't i sell more quantity so on all situations and these are the only four situations that can happen there cannot be a fifth situation so in all these four situations the market is making you regret that your decision was wrong because you did not you know uh, do it on the entirely on the you did not buy the entire quantity or you did not sell the entire quantity and so on and so forth so market is an extremely um, strong regret generation machine you do whatever you like and the market will make you regret so to come out of this regret you need to come up with a strategy a system a non discretionary way of investing so that you can remove yourself from the investing and there is a system that is doing the investing and you are watching from here so you've designed the system but you are you've disassociated yourself and now you're watching it from a distance that this black box is doing its work and whatever it is doing is uh, you know acceptable to me because that's how i've designed it that it will have maybe 50% uh, investments going right 50% investments going wrong but the 50% that go right will make me a lot of money and the 50% that go wrong will may lose me a somewhat less less money overall i'll make money so this is the kind of you know a structured data oriented approach that can really keep you sane in terms of not having regrets in market not having any you know anxiety in the market you know that you are following a path which is tried and tested over time and you know which delivers result over a medium to long term period and if you keep on continuing at it with you know uh, discipline you will uh, sort of you know uh, achieve the goals at the other end now usually what will happen uh, and it happens every bull run every bull run in stock uh, in any particular stock or you know general bull run in the market market will run up 2 300% people will buy here and then you know you'll have a 50% drop at the end of it and this happens every decade every 6 7 years uh, i am taking some examples here nifty from 99 went up 
and then post that you drop 51%. Uh, then again, uh, you know, 600% run up from 2003 to 2008 and 50-60% drop after that. So these ups and downs actually will keep coming. But what you need to see is how to make use of those ups and downs, how to not get fully entrapped when the market is coming down, how to cut your losses, how to preserve cash, how to have opportunity capital of your money. So if you are stuck in a, some stock, a stock has come down 60, 70, 80 percent and it's going to take, let's say, let's say another seven years for it to come back. You've lost the opportunity cost for seven years because you could have gotten out with some smaller damage and use that money in some other stock that could have done much, much better uh, for you. But you are because you are holding that stock, you are married to that stock. You want to make that loss out of that same stock and hence you will have to hold it. Sometimes it will take five years to come back. Sometimes it may take 10 years to come back. Sometimes it may never come back. The stock may, you know, just languish at lower levels. The stock may go bankrupt at times. If you will not believe the number of uh, stocks that have vanished from the face of the earth since the last 20, 30 years. And there are hundreds and thousands of them. Uh, we are so sort of clued in into the present moment that we forget that Nifty had stocks like JP Associates, Nifty had stocks like uh, India Bulls uh, Housing, Nifty had stocks like uh, Yes Bank, Nifty had uh, Vedanta at several points, Nifty had uh, uh, all kinds of, you know, IBRCL. Uh, I can rattle off so many names which have been in the top 50 uh, stocks or top 100 stocks and they are nowhere now. I mean, so many groups have just vanished from the face of the earth. So, uh, buy, sell, buy and hold and, or, you know, find out what is today's uh, uh, moat or advantage in a stock may not last, uh, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. So you have to remain vigilant. You have to remain, uh, you know, uh, uh, approach the market in such a structured way that th the market should tell you what you should be holding and what should you should be not, what should you should not be holding. Uh, Instead of you uh, sort of uh, making that uh, hypothesis that I want to hold this because of X, Y, Z reason, I say, you know, the market should be telling you what you should be holding. And I'll talk about this uh, more uh, later in the slides. Uh, fifth, very, very important is inability to cut losers. So this trading, uh, you know, adage that you hear, let your winners run, cut your losses, is the reason why the trading math you know, plays out. You do 100 trades, even if you win only 40%, but you lose 60%. But the ones that you lose 60% in, you know, may lose small, small uh, losses in those 60%. But the ones where you make money 40% are big wins. So the ability to cut losers early is very, very key in trading as well as investing. Um, so this uh, old uh, sort of um, habit, I may say that People get happier if the stocks are dropping because they will be able to average, they will be able to pick more quantity. Can work sometimes, but more often than not, they will damage your entire portfolio for years together. They will damage your confidence. They will damage the opportunity cost of your capital because you are sitting with your stocks. Some other group of stocks have taken the lead in the next bull run and you realize that in four, three, four years that everybody's portfolio has gone two, three X but I'm sitting with my stocks, which are barely, a, which have come back to cost for me. So a lot of things, I mean, I'm just touching upon several of these topics, but for instance, your cost of your uh, buying a stock, you say, let's say you bought a stock at 100 rupees and the stock is now at 50 and it goes 40, 50, 60, 40, 50, 60 for several years. Uh, rest of the market has gone somewhere else. You know, maybe there is uh, this, this sector that you are invested in is not working right now. Now, of course, you are losing uh, opportunity cost. That is, of course, uh, for sure. Two, you are losing losing your confidence that I'm unable to, you know, uh, go buy uh, stocks that are going up. I'm sitting with stocks, you know, that are just uh, limping around uh, here, so on and so forth. And uh, and and three is that, uh, you know, the a portfolio that is not advancing. I I personally believe that a portfolio that is not near or within the range of its all-time high at all points, uh, gives you a, a very negative vibe. 
and and that negative vibe is 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 uh, is a bit uh, you know it's it it breaks your confidence a bit it's it's it, it cripples your confidence in in going uh, ahead with new investments finding new uh, stocks because with each loss and and the loss is compounding uh, your ability to uh, to go find new ones also you know gets a bit inhibited so uh, just one example here that you know uh, yes bank is a very uh, typical example that we take because it is an extreme example so i mean people who bought yes bank at ipo or, or just after ipo even after 2008 crisis uh, got in at you know 10 20 rupees here i mean they saw the ride from 20 to 400 and then from 400 to 20 and even lower actually so just imagine if somebody has been building up their position uh you know all this narrative that you know the bank is doing well bank is doing well and so on and so forth and then then just within a year everything comes crashing down this can happen to any stock i mean no stock is you know so sacrosanct that nothing worse can happen in it anything can happen in any stock the moat can go away whatever technology they are experts at some new technology may come uh, some management may go rogue uh, you know, anything can happen to any stock. So, so again, uh, concentration also is one factor that I I always say that you know don't concentrate uh, so much. So, just to sort of assimilate these uh, thoughts, uh, how you know momentum uh, investing or structured approach can help you. So, for just to give you an example, in in our strategy, we would have you know bought Yes Bank at somewhere around here in 2014-15 at 100 rupees. And the stock lost momentum, uh, and these are monthly candles. So three, four months, uh, stock didn't go up. It actually kept slipping down. Would have gotten out here. The stock would have still gone up a bit more and then crashed. But the beauty is that you would not have had to sit through this entire pain. And uh, uh, one more thing that I want to share with you is that at this point, uh, Yes Bank was part of the Nifty. And all index investors actually had to be uh, invested in Yes Bank through Nifty, of course. And it remained in Nifty till it was removed from it at 20 rupees. So all the while that Yes Bank went from 400 to 20 rupees, it remained a constituent of Nifty, and all index holders had to, uh, you know, be a a, a, a pseudo investor in, in 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 yes bank because of their nature of holding nifty so essentially what i'm saying is that a strategy which can keep you out of harm's way yes every strategy will have some uh, hit at some point of time but to remain in a position where you know you are losing you are losing uh, more and more with each day and there is no sort of plan of action you know waiting and hoping is not a plan of action it may work sometimes but more often than not it will not work so you need to have a plan of action given that we are in a very dynamic world and uh, something that may be in play or, or that may be in fashion today may not be so in five years and and that is the key idea uh, you know that that always needs to be answered four questions that you always need to have an answer to whatever strategy whatever format uh, you may be using is what to buy when to buy how much to buy and when to sell these four questions should always be clear to you crystal clear to you what to buy when to buy how much to buy and when to sell and this is only possible when you properly structure your investment in a way where these are quantifiable otherwise there are 10000 variables you know uh, when to buy, how much to buy, what to buy. There are 10,000 variables going on. Liquidity issues are coming. Uh, some uh, FI selling is coming. Some uh, uh, sectoral trends are changing. Some government policies are changing in some sectors. Some vendor data is saying something. Sales data is saying something else. Margins are doing this and that. Interest rates are rising. Though so many variables are going on. How will you decide? So you need to have a, uh, a very, very clear uh, way of uh, understanding. This. So I'll just now very briefly touch upon how in momentum we sort of come to terms with all this so what is so what is momentum just to i'm sure most of you because you are in in the stock edge club uh, which is uh, you know already imparting you with so much knowledge on on a, on a day to day basis you already know all this but just to sort of also 
you know uh, welcome newer people who may not have been exposed so far in simplest of words momentum is just a sustained increase or decrease in pricing so if a stock continues to go up it is in up momentum the stock continues to go down it is in down momentum it is as simple as that and momentum investing uh, is just a extension of what momentum is so if momentum is stock uh, continuing to go up momentum investing is to invest in 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 a, in a set of stocks that are continuing to go up or you may say buy a stock that is going up sell a stock that is going down that is a simple uh, you know the most simple if you want to explain to a fifth grader this is a this is a most simple definition of momentum investing buy what buy what what goes up sell what goes down that is all what we are doing so now the question is that how do you frame uh, uh, create a framework of how to uh, you know measure momentum uh, how will you how will you calculate what stock how much a stock is going up how stock is going down so on so forth so momentum can be measured in several different ways and i'll just talk about very simple methodologies so just like value investing uh, fundamental investing you can do so many ways of approaching uh, the system you can have so many different types of valuation metrics so many types of you know how to do some of parts how to do uh, discounted cash flow earnings how to do you know uh, price earnings based or margins based uh, selections so the most popular way of momentum investing is to measure price change price change is basically rate of change so if some stock has gone up 50% in the last 12 months versus some stock which has gone up 40% in the last 12 months we will say that stock a has higher momentum and stock b has lower momentum than that uh, or you could instead of price you could use some indicator like let's say a very popular indicator like rsi so if a stock has higher rsi i would say you know the stock is in higher momentum the stock has lower rsi rsi else the stock is in lower momentum or i may use a uh, comparative matrix like you know uh, how far is my stock from its 52 week high a stock which is 10% lower than 52 week high i'll say you know is has higher momentum than a stock which is 40% lower than 52 week high so there are so many different ways in how you can create rules as to how to measure momentum uh the whole idea essentially is that you will create a portfolio of stocks let's say 20 30 stocks whatever is the design of your portfolio you will choose stocks based on their momentum rankings so you may say i want to choose the top 20 stocks out of nifty 50 which have the highest momentum so maybe i will, i can look at rate of change of nifty stocks over 6 months period over 12 months period and rank them according to that rate of change and say that okay i'm taking the top 20 and then maybe you know i let them run for a month and then again do this ranking and change the stocks accordingly for instance so what what you're doing essentially is you are measuring strength you are measuring strength in the market and you are saying that i want to be with the strength and i am allowing the weakness to get out of my portfolio so as soon as a stock is becoming weaker i am saying i don't want to be associated with this stock anymore the stocks that have replaced it with strength i want to be with that stock so it is like a survival of the fittest happening where automatically stocks that are losing ground or losing momentum get shifted out and stocks that are building momentum or are in uh, strong momentum come into your portfolio so the idea is that once a stock has some momentum that momentum will continue for some time that is the thesis it may or may not but uh, the idea is that a stock once it has momentum just like the newton's uh, uh, law that a, a body in motion will continue to be in motion until an external force is applied on it similarly happens in stocks uh, so so you want to have stocks that are already in motion you don't want to have dead stocks you don't want to buy stocks that are losing you want to buy stocks that are winning so this basically Uh, will come come back to a very um, conceptual uh, way of looking at stocks so uh, in conventional investing you are looking at stocks which are you know buy low and sell high you want to buy low and sell high here what we are saying is you are buying high and selling higher so there is a very conceptual difference i mean in execution it 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 is not so uh, you know simple Uh, it's not so easy to do it's simple but it's not so easy to do so uh, just like we say you know you can uh, have 
a great uh, health if you just go out and you know do a five kilometer jog every day it's a simple statement but it's not easy to do you know it requires discipline it requires you to have a very uh, contraintuitive that you know my body is paining but i have to go uh, so here also you know a stock has started to go up maybe it is near its 52 week high but you're buying it there which is very counterintuitive to what you may have otherwise been doing. And that is why, you know, these, these stocks continue to go up because there is disbelief. Uh, you would have noticed a lot of times the stock is going up. Nobody knows why stock is going up. So here we are not looking for the why at all. The stock is going up is, is good enough indication that something is happening there. I, don't, I need not know what is happening there. Or a stock is coming down, I, I've gotten out of it. I need not know why the stock is coming down because by the time I'll come to know the why, of that movement, it is already too late, right? So, I mean, using this momentum, last many bull runs, we've got some fantastic uh, picks, you know, Tata Alexi, Tata, uh, Tenla, Arti, Graphite, Rain, Adani stocks, several uh, several stocks that we've been able to pick up because you are allowing the unexpected to happen. Uh, you know, most people will just get out of the stock if they hit a 52 week high or if they go 2X from their price. Uh, because you are trying to control, you know, that no, I don't want the stock to go up beyond this. I want to get out. You're not allowing the stock to tell you that I, I'm, I'm wanting to go up further. If a stock is saying I'm going from 100 to 200, 300 to 400, allow it to go up. Let it tell you that I'm not going up further. I want to fall now and then you get out. So, so, so it's a very different kind of a approach from that perspective. So very, very briefly, uh, there are uh, mainly two types of momentum strategies. Uh, one is called the relative momentum, where you know you are measuring momentum in a stock relative to others in a group. So let's say you are looking at Nifty. So one stock in Nifty is it's let's say has a rate of change of 50%. You are measuring it versus the other stock of Nifty, which is at 45. The third one is at 40. So there is a relative competition between these three between these 50 stocks. In absolute momentum, also called time series or trend following momentum. Here, you're looking at a stock in, in absolute uh, terms. So you're looking at absolute uh, way of looking at the stock where uh, you're saying this stock uh, in, in absolute, is it worth, is it, is it having that momentum for me to pick it up? Let's say you have a rule where you're saying, I want to buy stocks only if their RSI is above, above 70, let's say. Uh, so if you're looking at, let's say ITC, and today's uh, RSI is at 75. So then it satisfies your condition on an absolute basis, regardless of where the rest of Nifty stocks are. And you're going to select it. If, if, if let's say, um, uh, uh, some other Nifty stock, uh, let's say Infosys has a RSI of 40, you're saying on absolute basis, this is below 70 and hence is not satisfying the rule. I'm not going to pick this. So on an absolute basis, you are either sitting in cash or you are deploying uh, capital in relative momentum there is no cash it is deployed fully and you're you're basically rotating stock so in a 20 stock portfolio for instance you are choosing the top 20 momentum uh, rankings if some if some stock drops out after a month or after a week or whatever is your rebalance period you will bring a new stock into that uh, period uh, gary antonacci devised an, a, a a third kind of uh, momentum uh, strategy is called a dual momentum but it's mostly suitable for ETFs or for asset class momentum against each other. Uh, so uh, just to sort of summarize uh, momentum versus other styles uh, in value or fundamental investing, you are trying to forecast the performance of the asset that my, I have this asset in this company. It is going to, how this is going to perform? How am I going to sell these uh, products? Uh, this is my management. This is my assumption. This is how the industry will grow when my company will do you know 2x of the industry and this is the margin i'm expecting and hence you know i am projecting that this will happen whereas in 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 momentum investing or price based price trend trend price uh, based investing you're saying that the price action is telling me what to do i really don't have uh, you know any forecast or prediction on this but i'm allowing the mass psychology to guide me i'm allowing the mass market to guide me whether the stock is wanting to go up or wanting to go down. In value or fundamental investing, the value, you may find a value in any stock, but until the price moves, you will not be able to realize the value. So value or fundamental investing is dependent upon momentum to realize what you're looking for. 
whereas in 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 price or momentum based investing you will buy only those stocks which you know have started to move uh it stocks will understand this uh, it guys will understand this that there's something called busy wake what you see is what you get so in 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 fundamental investing uh you may a lot of times maybe may a lot of guesswork is happening you know i'm guessing that this value is there but i don't know it will move or not whereas in price or momentum based investing it is very you know in the face if the stock is moving only then you are going for it otherwise you're not even touching then you know let's say external forces like liquidity flows you know fii sales are happening or you know qe or qt is happening in the us that all impacts all stocks you know whether fundamentals good or bad so on so forth and uh, and liquidity is not given so much importance but whereas in price and momentum it is all about liquidity uh, liquidity will flow towards uh, that stock that has something to offer at some point of time the why of that liquidity flow will come later but the liquidity flowing into a one direction or coming out of that stock itself is telling you that you know where the money is moving as the you know the classic uh, saying is say follow the money so the momentum is basically following the money you know where the money smart money is going so just to summarize this uh, uh, conventional investing is basically kind of saying i know more than the market the market is not pricing this right uh, i can lead the market and you know uh, i know what the right price should be whereas here we are saying that bhav bhagwan chair the bbc principle we are allowing the market to tell us what is happening and we are just like you know very obedient and uh, disciplined soldiers just following the leader Uh, which the market is uh, and and following price so just giving you a very very brief uh, uh, summary of some of our products here uh, mi india top 10 so all this is also available on the stock edge uh, website i'll just show you so just i'll give you a summary of two products that we have there mi india top 10 so this is a uh, product based on the nifty so what it does is it selects top 10 momentum stocks from the nifty and invest you know 10% in each of them a month later it will redo the momentum calculation and uh, you know one stock may come out and a new stock may come in and rebalance the stock so it will basically update the portfolio every month sometimes there may be some change sometimes there may not be any change so over time you what we will see is that gradually because you are staying with the strength of the index there are 50 stocks in the index if 20 are performing 20 are sort of mediocre and and 10 are losing ground you definitely don't want to be in that bottom 10 you want to avoid the 20 which are kind of neutral and you want to stay in the top 10 or 20 of the stronger stocks in the nifty at any point of time so what we have observed that over a longer period of time it gives a very superior return versus even the nifty uh, with a very low churn uh, total returns here uh, in the last 6 7 years at 219% versus 30 of nifty for instance so this is something that you could look at uh, advantages of momentum i think i've skipped some slides here oh i really have a lot of slides to go and time is already i think we are at 7:45 so i will extend it by a few minutes uh, just i just skipped some slides some top gainers we had here we'll just skip skip, skip that and second product that i wanted to introduce was uh, mi nnf10 so there's a index called nifty next 50 which sits just below nifty 50 stocks which are beyond the nifty and here also we do the same thing we select 10 stocks from this nifty next 50 index these are the stocks which have the potential to go and become nifty stocks so very very uh, uh, i would say potent uh, stocks are they and this also over time has done quite well uh, much above cagr than the nifty next 50 index much lower uh, drawdown and again just it this is just discipline of staying with the strength this is nothing else there is no rocket science here just staying with the strength uh, of what you can get and and reducing the uh, the the drag due to the negative stocks on that uh, so so this is uh, the, the other stock i just quickly uh, run through these different examples and we'll make this slides available so you can go uh, go through it in in, in, in at, at leisure and so myths of momentum this is something that i have wanted to there a lot of people think that you know momentum is a short term trading strategy it is not investing i have heard this a lot so from our experience our average sort of hold in any stock that we do is about 3 to 6 months so it is definitely not long term 
but it is not you know like short term trading as well it is somewhere near i would say a medium term hold and, uh, and 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 there are times when we hold stocks for several years also but that is not so common then another myth is that you know the edge will go away if more people do it so this is a total sort of uh, you know uh, fud if i may say so because there have been empirical studies over 200 years of data you know on the us stocks also they have done so much of research that this momentum investing has beaten all other factors of investing over time and mainly because this is you know uh, extracting the uh, alpha out of human behavior uh, it is a complete behavioral exercise that you are buying when others are selling uh, so you know it is it is a and until the time that uh, you know humans are impacting the way markets are uh, trading uh, this will not go away and 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 uh, and so from that perspective uh, the edge has remained forever and the last decade or so we've we've seen it on our uh, uh, examples as well third is it is too simple i mean everybody can calculate what is the ranking and how to allocate so on so forth i say that you know every the entire data that is available about any stock about earnings about uh, growth it is available to everybody so you know why isn't anybody able or everybody able to you know value something the same way you would have seen a stock is valued at 100 rupees by somebody somebody else says it's 50 somebody else says it's 200 because value lies in the art in the eyes of the you know beholder just like art so so while it is very simple momentum investing is counterintuitive in in execution so unless you are dedicated you are disciplined and you are uh, you know uh, sort of a believer that yes momentum investing will work for me uh, not many people will stick to it because you know they'll do it for a few months and then somebody else will say oh buy this stock and you forget about you know staying in discipline and all that will go away but uh, what we've seen is that you know Im immense immense advantages uh, because there is never a dilemma about what to buy when to buy how much to buy when to sell it's all crystal clear uh, you sleep with complete uh, peace winners are allowed to run so if your stock is going up 10x uh, you don't you're not worried at 2x you're not worried at 3x you're not worried at 4x you are allowing it to run whenever it turns and starts to fall that is when you get out uh, you don't have to deal with you know so many moving parts external variables because nobody is really able to deal with it however much narrative that may they may build around it uh, and of course you know you have the complete clarity and the complete peace of mind uh, around this so much so so this is uh, all i had for today's presentation now let me quickly go show you how i can uh, take you to the stockage page where you can access the strategy and then we'll open up for q a so let me just figure out how to get to the stockage page i have already opened it up i think somewhere yeah so if you can still see my screen uh, you would uh, uh, go to uh, when you open stockage.com i think uh, one second yes, we were able to see your screen so web.stockage.com yeah, yeah yeah so this is the investment cases that you see here within the explore and once you click on the investment cases you will come to the weekend investing strategies uh, that are there so this is uh this is all i had for today's uh, uh you know introduction to uh, weekend investing and to momentum investing now i'll open it up for questions so you can type in your questions into the question box and uh, let me see if i can uh, pull up the question box uh, and start answering questions Parag Shah is saying, will we get a PDF of this presentation? So I'll request Swatiji to make available a PDF of this presentation. We'll definitely have it for you. Uh, uh, Dhiru is asking a question. Whoever is in market from the very first day, everyone knows this problem is how to overcome. Please come to the point. I'm not sure what is the question. Dhiru, if you can, uh, you know, 
elaborate on your question i'll be able to answer it mitesh sa says should one sell stocks which retraces more than 20% from all time highs what should be the ideal strategy so just like you know any strategy there is no one answer there is no one parameter that you may use but yes i mean 20% from the top is a good exit point uh, you can test your thesis over a period of time and you know whether it is 20% whether it is 25% whether you want to club the exit with some uh, you know maybe breach of let's say uh, a 10 week moving average or you can combine it with with an exit uh, criteria of rsi going below a certain level so there can be several different ways in which how you can design your exit strategy and everything is 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 sort of uh, is 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 totally uh, fine how you wish to design this chinamnand has a question how do you measure stock doing visa v nifty are using an indicator for rs and what are the settings so uh, we are not measuring as a uh, indicator for rs as i mentioned we are measuring as a measure of what is the percentage change over a period of time and that percentage change of 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 the system is ranked versus other stocks in the index and then you choose the top 10 or 20 stocks that you want to choose Gautam has a question. Gautam Hebley, since investments make gains only when prices are going up, do you have any exit rules for sitting on sidelines during downtrend or do you stay invested always? And what could be a recommended market exit rule? So it depends upon what type of momentum investing you're doing. Let's say you are in a relative momentum strategy. There you are never going to exit, but you are going to rotate into the strongest stocks at that point of time for for instance let's say in 2008 all stocks came down now every stock is at you know minus 10 percent minus 20 percent minus 30 percent that kind of situation so you are picking up the uh, most defensive stocks so your portfolio will automatically rotate into the most defensive stocks it will go from metals it auto into let's say pharma uh, and fmcg you know, it will automatically rotate into the strongest stocks and as and when new sectors start to trend up, your portfolio will automatically rotate into those stronger sectors as they, you know, come around and start having a higher momentum score. Uh, next one is from Arvind Sampath. Which indicator will tell us that market is moving from momentum regime to value regime? So, there is no indicator that may tell you but yes once the momentum is lost and you will find that absolute momentum strategies come to cash and relative momentum strategies have rotated into defensive sectors that is the time where value will start to emerge uh, and 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 the value uh, will emerge and once the trend changes you will find that new leaders will come and start to go up and lead the uh, lead the market up and that's how you will go into those sectors post that switch ashok <coughs> potable says how do i decide that the stock is losing its momentum actually and now i should sell so ashok again uh, just as i mentioned exit rules can be uh, anything that defines a stock has lost momentum so just like some examples had come uh, in previous questions a percentage drop from all-time highs a breach of a particular uh, moving average a breach of uh, average true range a breach of uh, a ranking uh, of you know a percentage change from a uh, from last six months period i mean my stock i i only want to take the top 20 rankings if the ranking has dropped to 25 i want to get out of it so it is all about how you're going to design uh, your selection criteria and once that selection criteria has been breached you will be able to get out of that stock gautam hebli has another question since momentum investing is very time based buy stocks that are strong at a particular point how can one someone backtest such a system what tools to use such a backtest so first of all you will require uh, time series data so you will require historical data from a data vendor 
you may require some tools like uh, i mean i use metastock i use me broker uh, but my uh, you know my tools are quite old like i am so i'm sure there are some uh, more modern day uh, back testing methodologies also available but i use these conventional softwares uh, which require some uh, purchase uh, license purchase at the time of buying it but once you have them then i think it's a lifetime kind of a thing so if you buy one analysis tool like uh, me broker or metastock and buy a uh, data feed from any of the data vendors you should be able to do any of these testing arvind has um, question what is the suggested rebalance frequency for horizon 5 years of holding so if you want to hold for 5 years uh, if i am getting this correctly your rebalancing uh, strategy will have to be very very wide so maybe like once a year you may want to you know uh, rebalance your portfolio because you are looking at very long term trends maybe you are looking at uh, you know 200 uh, week moving averages uh, or maybe even you know uh, 100 month moving average so on and so forth so if you go going to want to hold for that long a period you will have to you know expand the horizon of the measurement that you are doing Mr M Ram has a question is this sessions a lok marketing his small case then the name of the session should be changed so i think i've given you a enough of a feedback on how momentum works and yes this is also a showcase of weekend investing strategies i'll not uh, you know go away from that point how to invest in these strategies so if you go to the stock edge web page as i've shown uh, and go to the small cases you will come to all the small cases and we have shown the small cases right here uh, nnf2 nnf10 and india top 10 what is the cagr uh, inception since mi india top 10 so you can always go here and it will tell you we started last year so currently we really don't have much of cagr to show since launch but in our entire study we have it as a market beating strategy and we will Uh, see that once the market picks up bhavesh bhanushali says there can be multiple stocks having higher momentum how how many stocks are ideal to be in the portfolio so the ideal portfolio is typically 15 to 30 stocks uh you you may choose to have you know 15 20 25 30 30 which whatever may be your comfort but i typically feel that if these are large cap names you can concentrate to 10 or 15 also and if it is going to be focus more towards mid and small caps then you could go at you know 25 and above because you then want to also have more safety of 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 uh, one stock not damaging your entire portfolio for basic momentum investing what risk reward ratio should we aim at so in most of our strategies we will find that uh, we do a 40 to 50% win versus a 50 to 60% uh, loss and the average win is about 3 times more than the average loss so that is the experience that we've had that over a entire business cycle you will see uh, an average win of Three to four times than the average loss, and the win loss will be about about even. I would say fifty fifty on that. How uh, Rama Krishna Datta says how to deploy hundred rupees in momentum investing. So uh, you could look at you know if you uh, getting into any of these strategies, they will deploy equal weight. You know ten percent each to ten strategies to ten stocks. but if you are deploying it in your own momentum strategy of your let's say deploying into 20 stocks you could equal weight them and you know put 5 rupees uh, in each stock amitabh nath says whether to follow the daily chart or weekly chart so again depending upon the strategy if your strategy is a fast churn strategy uh, you could look at the daily charts if you are looking at a more longer term slower strategy you could look at the weekly charts you could also look at monthly charts if you want even a slower one so it all depends upon how you want to decide, uh, 
design your strategy. Uh, Animesh Kundu says, is it possible to deploy the same strategy in derivatives? So technically it is possible to do that with the derivative stocks. But what happens in derivatives is that because the value of each lot of the derivative is, is uh, you know, different, you know, one lot, maybe seven lakhs for one and another could be four lakhs for the other. It is difficult to weight them unless you are you know, playing crores on that. So from that perspective, for smaller portfolios, it may not make any sense. Amandeep Gupta has a question, which indicators do you use in your trading? So I, we don't use any indicators. Our, all our strategies are basically based on pure price-based calculations. So price and volume are the two uh, elements that we use in our strategies. Which indicator should we use? I, uh, so I mentioned uh, this slide that I have shown you earlier, uh, where you can choose uh, whichever way you wish to uh, you know design your strategy whether it is price or whether it is indicator based uh this is something that is is, is something that you can choose uh where is that slide that i had yeah so again i mean i just uh, showing you this to you again that based on rate of change based on indicator like rsi stochastics macd anything that me choose or you may choose a variation of you know nearness to the q2v high these are just some sample example uh, uh, questions uh, which okay bharat kumar says is it chargeable for club members so i i don't think it is you have to pay specific charges but for these strategies uh, when you will go to the small case you'll have to pay the small case subscription charges for that how to invest in these small cases i've already shown sujay sulay has this question uh, raghu has well while selecting the momentum stock do you also look into the momentum of the sector no we don't we don't look at the momentum of the sector usually when you will be able to select a stock uh, uh, you will be find that you know most of the time uh, the sector also has momentum, but we don't have that as a filter to not buy that stock. Uh, Shalab says, how to make an entry in momentum? So I think, please go through the presentation. You will get the answer again. Uh, Mohan says, can momentum be identified with RSI? Yes, so higher RSI should typically give you stocks which have higher momentum. And that's how you can identify this. Uh, Rashmi says, what is your strategy for exit? So please go through these slides. I've given enough uh, examples how you can exit uh, strategies. Uh, Manoj says, Mano is momentum trading done on weekly or monthly time frame? Uh, so I would suggest that if you are doing uh, mid and small cap and, uh, strategies stocks, uh, try to use weekly time frame because you will be able to do a quicker uh, reaction to to uh, to your rebalance but if it is uh, more of large caps you can keep a monthly time frame also uh, so shield maheshwari has the same question about rebalancing i think you got your answer uh k Chaudhary says is there an indicator to follow in momentum strategy so i talked about indicators can i invest for monthly basis no i don't think so that is a good idea all these strategies are long-term strategies which will require you to go through the entire business cycle of the market and and in the entire cycle to reap benefit out of it uh msk gupta is asking for momentum investing comparing with nifty or sector will be more beneficial so if you are doing a sectoral uh, momentum strategy where let's say you pick only banking stocks then you it is and, and you're choosing you know momentum within bank banking stocks then maybe comparing it to the banking sector is is it will make sense but when you're doing a general uh, you know investing of nifty stocks then comparing with nifty makes more sense uh, dilip paranjpe says what is the frequency of review so our frequency of review 
in both these strategies is monthly we are dealing with large cap stocks here only uh, Raghu Kumar says, how do you define the exit points? As I mentioned, exit points can be defined in several different ways. In our strategies, we calculate the price variation over a specific period of time. Uh, and then we do a ranking. And based on that ranking, if the stock has dropped out of those ranking, we will remove the stock. Uh, Jeevan says, any discount for stockage members? So I think there is uh, a uh, discount code that has been created. Uh, maybe... Uh, so posted that discount can... code in the chat box for everyone here. So if you all wanted to invest through the small case result, which Aloki takes care of, so you can route it through the stockage application. So what you need to do is you can log into web.stockage.com and uh, under the in under the investing uh, you know cases, you will find that the first two option which is available, it is right that. Okay, so investment cases, you can see that the first two options are available. And also the coupon code, uh, we will post through the stockage uh, support handle that is from the customer delight handle. And I have also posted the coupon code here in the chat box for everyone. The coupon code is very simple, WKI stockage 20. And please remember the validity is still this end of the month, that is 30th April. Okay, so Swatiji, so should I continue going on because I I, I see a lot of questions. Uh, yes, may not be... I, I think we are good to wind up the session in next two minutes, so you can just take up the last question, Aloki, okay. if possible. Okay. Let me just choose a question that has not been taken up. Uh, so the one question from GS says, why do you keep your universe limited to top 100 in both portfolios nifty 500 can be a good idea so it's a good question uh, we have uh, uh, only two portfolios on uh, stock edge right now uh, primarily to introduce uh, momentum investing uh, as a basic uh, way of investing and so we have introduced only the large cap ones but otherwise we do have many portfolios on our small cases which have uh, you know nifty 500 or even beyond small small cap stocks in them but for a stock edge uh, platform we've introduced only uh, two uh, small cases with uh, with the large caps there uh, one more last question i'll take is mr suresh chohan he says whether 20 percent discount is for single strategies or more than one so you can choose as many number of strategies as you like and this discount will be applicable on that so uh, i'm sorry if i'm not able to take uh, a lot many questions that more have come but you can drop me an email at support at weekendinvesting.com and we'll try to answer those questions no no problem at all uh, but we had uh, designated some time and we're already past that time today so maybe in the next session or maybe we'll have some other uh, interactive session where all these questions remaining questions can be answered so thank no, you so much for your time and uh, thank you swatiji please please take take it from here uh, thank you so much, Alokji, for such a lovely session. And uh, people have loved your session here. That's why the question were here. So please do not mind for the uh, for the uh, family member here who have joined it. In case we have missed out your question, as rightly said, Alokji, that uh, you can put your question to him too. So thank you, everyone, and have a great time with your family. Have a lovely weekend, and thank you so much, Alokji, from Dilse. Thank you, Ji. Bye bye.